Hey everyone. Hey, how are ya? Welcome to today's video and today we are talking about our core staple ingredients that we keep in our pantry at all times. Now when we started keto, one of the things that we did is we went through the cupboard and we got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. Anything that had sugar in it, things like sugar, um, <laughs> tomato sauce, um, the flowers, so the plain flour, self-raising yes. flour, all for the starches. Of the, the starches, well, yep. So we got rid of our flour, all of the sugars, and we had a whole range of those as well. So they all went, uh, the oils, so we got rid of the canola oil, the vegetable oils, all gone. So these are the things that we now have in our cupboard and could not do without on the ketogenic diet. First up, we are going to talk about almond flour also known as ground almond or almond meal. Yeah. So this is one that we just purchased from our local supermarket. Uh, we usually have lots of packs of these. Uh, so we can just uh, use this in so many different items, whether it's bagels or if we're making a, a keto-friendly bread, um, waffles, uh, it could be a cheesecake uh, crust as well. So this is used in lots and lots of our recipes. And not just almond flour, but usually use it in combination with coconut flour as well, which is mm. um, a little bit harder to find. We've had to find this in a couple of specialty stores when we've needed it. Uh, but usually in co combination with the ground almond, we yeah. can make something to, to replace normal flour. Yeah. Usually in baking, which brings us to baking powder as well. This is a gluten-free baking powder. We can get this at the local supermarket. We've been looking for bigger packs I've been looking for bigger packs. I haven't told you that. Um, but you can buy this pretty much anywhere. It is gluten-free because we're avoiding the starches and that sort of thing that's yeah. involved in wheat products. And so mm -hmm. that is another one that we have all the time. Next up is Passata. This one, we again, it's available in many of our local supermarkets. So it's really easy to get. Uh, we choose Passata over the jars of ready-made pasta sauce because the sugar content is much, much lower. Yeah. So we use passata in a lot of our tomato-based sauces. So we do uh, a bolognese sauce. So when we do courgette, uh, so we're doing, um, or zoodles is another way of saying it. So it's just pasta made out of zucchini or courgette, depending on where you're from. Yeah. And then this is the accompanying sauce for that. That's right. And we will also use this in our uh, lasagna that we make. So again, we've taken out the pasta sheets and we put in cabbage instead. So again, this is a great uh, tomato-based sauce for us to use uh, that is not uh, really, really high in sugars. Okay, next one is coconut oil. We use this as our main cooking fat. So if we're yeah. frying chicken or something like that, shallow fry, we don't deep fry really, um, but we would be using this. We use it in little fat bomb recipes, little, little yeah. chocolate treats. We'll put that in there. Um, bases for like biscuit bases and that sort of thing. There's a whole lot of things that we use Reused that in. across um, so many things. Yeah, and it's really just a, a good replacement for other fats. It's got a high smoking temperature, so it doesn't oxidize mm. as readily as other things do. Um, but that's one mm. that we use all the time. Next up, we have coconut milk. So we use coconut milk in uh, some desserts. So if we are making a chocolate mousse, uh, also we love Thai. So again uh, coconut milk is used in thai so when we're making a thai green curry or, or a laksa yes so really great for that as well yeah. next up is cocoa powder so for this i love my sweets so this is a really important ingredient so the great thing with uh, cocoa powder is that it is negative carbs so what that means is that the fiber content is greater than the actual carbs itself. So this is a, a really great ingredient to have. Um, just make sure that it doesn't have any yeah. added sugar. So always check the ingredients. So the next one that we're gonna look at is our sugar replacements. And yeah. for us, the main ones that we use are erythritol, and xylitol. Now this is a mm -hmm. big bag and this will last us ages. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of people talk about the three main sugar replacements that they use would be mm -hmm. erythritol, uh, stevia and xylitol. Stevia has a fairly strong aftertaste which is why we choose not to use it. Yeah. Uh, both of these have almost no aftertaste. Mm. Now erythritol does have a slight characteristic to it that some people will like, some people will not. It has a bit of a, a cooling to it, almost like when you have a, a, a menthol mint or something like that and you get that 
feeling in your mouth of freshness, erythritol does that. So if you're using that a lot in baking, it's just something you need to know about. Now, when we use xylitol, we only use it in small amounts because it still has a higher glycemic index reaction than something like erythritol. Yeah. We might use a teaspoon of it in a cup of tea. So when we're baking though, we would more likely to use erythritol rather than anything else. Yeah. Now, something to keep in mind when you're using replacement sugars yeah. is uh, the impact on your digestive system let's say digestive discomfort mm. yeah yeah um you don't want to have it in like you don't want to have excess yeah. consumption very much you, you like just... it says on packets of chewing gum excess consumption mm. may have a laxative effect <laughs> <laughs> although i have to say I, I don't it doesn't really react for me i think it's fine i that but that's just me so this is where it comes down to you you trying what works for you but i think maybe you get used to it maybe yeah don't know, but that, it works for us. And on top of these, there are so many more sweeteners out there on the market that are keto friendly. Yeah. And it comes down to trying what works best for you. So other than that, there's some fresh ingredients that we always have on hand. Mm -hmm. uh, bacon, bacon's one of them. Have bacon for breakfast most mornings. Uh, we've recently found a nitrate free bacon that we've yeah, switched to, so great. that's good. Yes, and eggs. We are loaded with eggs. We have lots and lots of eggs because we yeah. go through it a lot so yes we do love our eggs but then also green veggies uh like mm. rocket and spinach and kale this sort of stuff that we always have yeah. going through always yeah uh the other thing is avocado uh we yeah. have lots of, avocados, lots of avocados so we do eat that and obviously with the good fats and the and the fiber and all that with that can't get enough of it. so there you have it they are our core ingredients that we have in our kitchen in our pantry pretty much at all times Hope you found it useful. Hope you've got some ideas out of it. If you've got something that you keep in your cupboard and we don't know about it, please let us know. Mm. Use the comments, uh, drop us a line, whatever. We'd love to hear from yeah. you. Any, any bit helps. Cool. Well, that's it. So thanks very much. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.